Hargrove, I am the Community Engagement Director for Glass Mind Theatre, and I have found the person that I am going to spend the rest of my life with. Now, if you can't tell, I am a flaming homosexual, but the person that I am going to spend the rest of my life with is a young lady named Charity Reed. I love her. I am in love with this woman. She is what is perfect in people for me. Man, woman, pet, whatever. She's perfect. And when we met, I was working for TGI Fridays. And she was sort of this, okay, let me, let me back up a little bit. I, I worked for TGI Fridays, and, I, and when I was 18, 19, I went and opened the store that they opened in Bel Air. And I was the first head server for that restaurant. I wrote the schedule. I trained almost everybody that worked, and everybody had to go through training with me. And I was 18, 19 years old, the youngest person that has ever done that job. And I was good, and I loved it. And I, you know, it was it was the highlight of my life at that point because I assumed I would be working for Fridays forever. By the way, I'm not working there anymore. <laughs> anyway, I met Charity, um, and I thought she was a little odd, but she was interesting. And then one day. She came up to me and said, what are you doing tonight? And I said, uh, I don't know. I was going to get off work and go home. Now, granted, I'm 19 at this point. And she said, well, there's this little bar in Canton. Do you want to go get something to drink? And I said, OK. So we go to Canton, we go to this bar, and we had a great time. This is the beginning of our friendship. We drank, we made out together and with other people. and. That little bar, by the way, is now called Sonar, and it's not in Canton. <laughs> I, I was 19 years old, and I was on the list permanently, and she was uh, 23 at the time, and she could barely get it. It was a hot mess. But anyway, so Charity and I started our whirlwind romance around the world, and we traveled. I followed her to Florida. She's the reason I moved down there. She's the reason I met Paris Hilton and called her a cunt. Um, the, she and I, you, you, you remember that scene in uh, Lady and the Tramp when the two dogs were eating the spaghetti? We did lines of coke like that. That's how adorable and cute we were. It was, it was awesome. Oh my god, we did lines off the same penis and then made out with each other together. That's, it was just this whirlwind of drugs, alcohol, and I turned, I, I, I had you know so many mo mo monumental things happen in my life with this woman and because of this woman, and she really became the person that I was going to spend the rest of my life with. We always say that when we turn 80, her parents, well, when I turn 80, because she'll probably be in her late 80s by then, her kids will have thrown her into a nursing home because she'll have dementia. I will roll up in my red convertible and my 28-year-old boyfriend, but I look like I'm younger because of the joys of plastic surgery because I'm going to get some. I will look younger. I will kidnap her, and once a month, we are going to have a perfect day. This is the girl I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Well, one day... I, uh, we were living in Florida, I think, and I, I always tell the story about how we met. It was like all fun, and she asked me to go out, and it was so much fun, and I got really drunk, and I drank I drink this martini called a Jolly Rancher, but Sonar put Red Bull in it, which is really funny, because I started working for Red Bull soon after that. It was like a whole thing, but anyway, I would tell the story. And one day, somebody asked Charity while I was standing right there, and she said, well, how, they said, how did you, how did you guys meet? You guys act like you're in love. Like, how, how did you get together? How did you meet? And she said, well, I have to go back a little bit to tell that story. When I was, the, and I'm speaking as Charity at this point, which she was, well, I won't speak as her, I'll just talk for her. So when she was 10 years old, her mother took all of her troll dolls that she had and put them in a trash can and lit them on fire in front of her. Yeah, her mother's a crazy bitch. Um, and then she had an exorcism about an hour later because her mother was trying to exorcise the demons from her. That parlayed into her doing a lot of drugs, getting into the raver scene, which I was also in, but I was like 12, so you know, take that as you will. Um, she did a lot of drugs, she didn't do well in school, she went to college, she didn't do well in college. She had to get a job because she was flunking out of school. So she got a job at TGI Fridays. And she hated it. It was the worst job she could possibly have.
it was like high school all over again. There was the popular clique, there were the outskirt people, there were the the parent, the teachers that weren't really paying attention to what was going on, there was a lot of bullying, it was horrible. And she went to her therapist one day and she said, I can't do this anymore, but I need a job and I make the money and I don't know what to do. And her therapist said to her, you find the one person that is the worst, the bottom of the barrel, the person who makes you your skin crawl, and just go say hi to me. The next day, Charity Reed said hi to me and invited me out. I represented for charity the worst of America, the worst of our society, the worst of humanity. I was that one thing that made her life on this earth horrendous. And now she can't get rid of me. Thank you guys.